My name's Eric, I'm a digital nomad traveling around the country in my Subaru Forester, and today I'm escaping normal life in Shenandoah National Park. Well, I'm at my camp spot for the night. This is a national forest, and believe it or not, you can stay here for free up to 14 days. And it is just absolutely beautiful here. It's gonna be nice and quiet. I still have a lot more of the state to see. I'm only kind of around the center of the state right now. I do have plans to go into Shenandoah National Park, and I honestly have no idea how many days I'll stay there. So I just spent three nights in the national forest uh, camping at a beautiful spot, really beautiful spot. But I am headed to a car wash now because I have not washed my car since Florida. So it has been over a month and it is dirty because the campsites I have been going to, most of them are down some dirt roads. So this thing needs it bad. We do this every day and I'm still so amazed by you. So home Oh, uh, she's a beauty again. <laughs> Looks good. She hasn't had a bath in a while. All right, well, the car's all clean. I got a couple more errands to run before I head into Shenandoah. I'm gonna do laundry, and then I've got to go to the grocery store because I think I'm gonna be in the park area for about a week. And even though there's a couple small towns just outside of the boundaries of the park, I just wanna get this stuff done now. I really need laundry done anyways. I've never being more than friends, yeah. You know I'm here to stay every single day, yeah. Never heard of it, but I'll give it a shot. All right, I'm leaving town just a little bit later than I wanted to. I had to do quite a bit of errands this morning. I went to the gym, I went to the grocery store, I washed the car, I did laundry, and I got some work done. Uh, oh, and I stopped for lunch at a really great place called Deli's, Deli's Up. It was really good. It's in Waynesboro, Virginia. I would highly suggest you go there if you're in town. But I'm headed to Shenandoah now. I'll be there in just a few miles. The first hike I'm gonna do is a place called Jones Run. All right, first hike of the day, I'm going to a place called Jones Run. I put the solar up on the car to charge my battery while I'm gone. Let's go ahead and get started. I feel like I've been here before. Familiar with the view, this ain't nothing new. And every time that you walk through the door, I'm here. All right, so I was hoping to get two hikes in today. Uh, <laughs> All Trail says this hike is four miles round trip. But the sign back there at the trailhead said this hike is three miles round trip. So <laughs> either way, it's pretty pretty quick little uh, hike. It's to a waterfall, which should be pretty nice. Uh, so the other hike I was looking at today is another waterfall. However, it is a six mile hike. Plus I'd have to drive there. And um, I just don't think there's enough hours in the day before I would have to get to camp to make sure that I'm not getting to camp when it's dark. And I really hate doing that because I park in some pretty remote places and it gets really dark and it's hard to see campsites and it's hard to see rocks and everything else that you're driving over. So instead, I'm going to do this hike, drive to my place wherever I'm going to sleep. Still not 100% sure. I mapped out a few places and then I'll just pack in a couple more hikes tomorrow. So I'm here for about a week, so plenty of time. Well, not exactly the view I was hoping for. Uh, if 
I would have gone on all trails and read some of the comments, I bet you anything people have made comments for the last week or two saying that this thing is pretty dried up. So, hey, on the bright side, it was a really beautiful hike. It was all in the shade. It's also like 75 out here. It's gorgeous, bright, sunny skies. Really, really nice. It is all uphill on the way back. And I actually just hiked an extra mile down and an extra mile up because all trail said this hike went a little bit further down, which it does. This, this actually makes a loop for another like six miles. But all trail said this particular hike just to get to these falls was actually another mile down. So I thought maybe instead of just this waterfall, there might've been another way down there, but there wasn't. This is, this is unfortunately it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I got here much later than I anticipated. And in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have come today because now it has gotten much later and I'm trying to find a place to uh, sleep for the night. And there is no, wow, that's a nice view. And you cannot do any overnight sleeping in a national park unless you're staying at an established campground. And I don't do established campgrounds. First off, they cost money. And second off, I have to do it every single night and it's just not worth it to me. So I'm actually having to drive 40 minutes to get to this little small town where I'm gonna have to do some stealth camping tonight. That means I'm staying in a city. So it's not, it's not the ideal kind of camping you want. Stealth camping means you go in there late at night and you sleep and you leave pretty early in the morning. So you stealth in, stealth out, that's kind of the idea. And you, no one knows the wiser that you were sleeping in your car. And then there's actually supposed to be a really great uh, stargazing place to see. So I'm headed to the small town now. It's 40 minutes away. Uh, I like to get there before it gets dark because I wanna go ahead and make sure that it is uh, looking safe and not feeling really seedy or anything. So the area is looking good and then come back into the park later tonight and do some stargazing because it is a crystal clear day. So it should be a crystal clear night and it should be some really great stargazing, so. All right, so I can either park here, which is basically just a empty lot of some sort. I'm not sh quite sure why this is here, but there's two other cars here. They're not sleeping here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what this empty lot is here, but I can definitely stay here or I can go right across the street. There's a community center over there. And it looks like somebody's already sleeping there. Or it could be like a community center van. Probably drive around there in a second. Let's see. So those are my options. Stealth camping in gravel, stealth camping on concrete. <laughs> All right, after driving around for a minute, I have decided to just go ahead and stay across the street because even though all people on iOverlander have said that they have stayed here before with no issues, I don't know, you could have a cop or people just arriving here super early or something like that and knocking on the window and saying you can't stay here. So there's no signs that say you can't stay across the street and why not, you know? It's not part of the community center parking lot, so it just feels like I'd get less of the knock. However, now that I know this is here, this is, I wanted to get here in plenty of light just to check it all out and everything. Now that I know this is here, I'm gonna head back into the park, it's only like, 10 minutes behind me and there's supposed to be a really great place for stargazing and it's gonna be an epic stargazing night i think because it was a really clear sky today i think it's gonna be a really clear, clear sky tonight so that's what i'm gonna do well good morning i am starting my morning off here at a place called dark hollow falls it's one of the more popular hikes here in shenandoah national park and online everyone says this gets very very crowded so to get here early which I did, and it's good because there's only one other car here. <laughs> so it's a pretty quick hike. It's only like a mile and a half round trip. So let's go check it out. All right, well, definitely a better waterfall than yesterday, which was not much of a waterfall at all. It's really more of a trickle. 
Um, but it is all uphill going back, which means I'm going to definitely work up an appetite, which is good because there's actually an overlook not too far from here. So I can make breakfast with a really great view. Whew. One thing is for sure though, I have been on flat Florida sea level ground for too long. These hikes going up, they definitely getting to me. <laughs> it's weird that I used to do like 10 mile hikes as my average when I was traveling in my trailer. But yeah, I'm gonna have to work up to that. <laughs> so this is Big Meadows. And this is where I came to do some stargazing last night. I had no idea this was all just one big open field like this because it was pitch black. It did make for some great skies, uh, but I was like walking really slow. I had like a red light uh, with my flashlight. I tried not to use like a uh, actual flashlight because there was actually quite a few people out here stargazing. And you know, you don't wanna be that person who's got the flashlight when everybody's trying to look into the night sky. So I had my red light, but red lights don't put out a ton of light. They just help you see kind of the maybe foot and a half in front of you. <laughs> so I was actually right over here, uh, sitting down, looking at the stars. Great stargazing. <laughs> But uh, it's nice to see it during the day, too. At least I'll have dinner with a view tonight. Oh man. What a lovely parking lot to sleep in. All right, well, I escaped normal life in a lovely gravel parking lot the last two days. <laughs> it's just really my only option. There's no sleeping in the national park unless you're staying at the campground, and I just don't want to pay $30 a night to do that. So stay here in the small town uh, in this little gravel lot, and it was fine. It's very, very quiet. Um, there's no signs. I always look for signs to say you can't do any kind of overnight parking, but there's no signs here. So, yeah. It's, no one bothered me. It was nice and cool in the evenings. It was fine. When I do sleep in the city, though, I try to help stay a little stealthy. And so no one notices me in the car. And I put these up. So these are reflectives that I made. So it's reflective on this side to help keep this heat inside, especially when it gets really cold. But on this side, it's just black. So it looks like I have really good tinted windows. So all this is, is it's foam core that I picked up at a dollar store. All right, so it's already got a level of uh, foam there. And then on this side, I picked this up on Amazon. And it's just a roll of reflectives and it's foam uh, insulation on the inside there. And then I just taped them together. I used black tape so that that way on this side, it would blend a lot more on this side for facing out. Um, I actually glued this whole thing down on the black side as well. So it really sticks pretty good to it. They work pretty well, they're lightweight, easy to pop on and off in the window. I had to cut them down to fit the windows exactly.
All right. Well, my day has not gone according to plan. So I was trying to do this extra hike today. And as I was driving to that trailhead, I saw this turnoff and I thought it would have really great pictures for the thumbnail for this video. So I parked and started taking pictures for the thumbnail. And as I was using my tripod to set up the camera to take the pictures, the tripod broke. And I spent like an hour trying to fix it and it will not get fixed. So I have to buy another one. I found one at a Best Buy not too far from here that uh, is kind of on my path that I think I'm going to have to pick up, but just sucks. After I messed with the tripod for at least an hour, uh, I noticed that the kitchen inside the car had actually shifted about an inch over. So I had to adjust that. So that took some time to fix that. And then while I was in the car, I just started noticing little um, things that need to be fixed in my home. <laughs> I have these like lights that go around the ceiling of the car that I used to have in my trailer. And so I put them in here and I have two sets of lights. I have like just these white fairy lights. And then I have these like multicolored lights that go up there. Well, since I had both, I put both of them up there, but I have not used the multicolored lights once. Uh, I thought I would, but I just haven't used them. The fairy lights are much more practical inside the car. Uh, and the multicolored lights were like much heavier than the fairy lights. So they kept falling from the ceiling. And I kept saying to myself, I need to just take them down anyways. And they were falling down in a couple places. So I decided, you know what? Let me just go ahead and fix that while I'm here. So I went ahead and took that down. So I took the opportunity to just do a little bit of housekeeping in the car and just fix a little bit of things that needed some like tightening up. <laughs> and then, you know, as I sat here, uh, looking at my phone, trying to find places to sleep tonight and, uh, seeing kind of like what I want to do for the rest of the day. It just really kind of dawned on me. Like I come to these national parks all the time and I constantly feel the obligation to like, just go, 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 right. Packing all these hikes and see all these scenic views and do all this stuff. But the reality is these parks are preserved so that we can really admire the beauty within them and just kind of slow down and not take life so quickly all the time. And I know I'm very guilty of that. I tend to get to a place and just go, okay, now on to the next place. I have to see more things. This is a park. And just like any park, you should really sit there and just admire the beauty around you. So I put down my chair, I grabbed an adult beverage, and I've just been sitting here taking in the views. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to go back to Big Meadows Visitor Center. And that's about 30 minutes behind me. I actually went there last night to do some stargazing, but the visitor center does a ranger led stargazing event um, on Tuesdays. So I'm going to go back there and do that because when I look up at the night sky, I have no idea what I'm looking at. They're just white dots in the sky. I don't know what constellations are and what anything is. I'm not an astronomer. <laughs> The nice thing about these ranger-led events, I did one in um, Badlands National Park once, and it's by far one of the coolest things I ever did. It's just so worth it. You learn so much. So I'm going to do that tonight. Well, all right. Well, as much as I've enjoyed Shenandoah National Park, I am hiked out. <laughs> My calves are really screaming at me. Three days of hiking has really just gotten to me. I still have my Florida legs. <laughs> I'm not used to doing thousand feet elevation gains and stuff like that yet. Well, I'll get there, I'm sure, uh, but I'm just just not quite there yet. Even though the hikes I've done have not been that extreme, <laughs> I am just kind of wiped out. I really hate to leave here because it's just nice and quiet, it's very serene, and it really is away from everything else. But unfortunately, I do have to go back into a city. I have to A, well, I don't have to do this, but I would like to do this. I would like to go to a Planet Fitness and get a shower because I have not gotten a shower in the past couple of days, and I've been sweating a lot doing all this hiking. And two, uh, I broke my tripod yesterday, so now I have to go into um, one of the nearest towns. There's a Best Buy, and I saw one online that I really like, and they have that. Then there are a couple other places in Northern Virginia that I'm still looking to check out. I'm going to go to Great Falls National Park, and then I'm also going to head to uh, Harper's Ferry. That's been recommended to me a few times now. That's where I'm headed.
Well, I am standing here on the Potomac River, and right over there is Harper's Ferry. And I knew absolutely nothing about Harper's Ferry until I got here, but it turns out it's a very old historic site. It's been in West Virginia since the 1800s, and it played a crucial element in the Civil War. So it was really interesting to walk around there, see history, but also see a ton of natural beauty around me. I absolutely love it when I can blend American history with natural history. So I think I might go ahead and end my video here. I am technically in West Virginia. I am no longer in Virginia. Um, however, I'm still headed north. As I've mentioned a few times now, I'm headed into the New England area with Maine being my first stop. And then from Maine, I'll go into uh, New Hampshire and Vermont and upstate New York. Looking at a map and deciding where I want to go to from here, I honestly don't know. <laughs> uh, I've been pretty lucky and fortunate that I've spent most of my life on the East Coast and so I've actually seen a lot of the history already around the area before. So I don't feel so obligated to spend a lot of time in this area. What I'm more interested in is probably seeing more of the natural history. So mountains and things like that. And looking at a map, uh, just a few hours from here, about five hours, is the Catskill Mountains. And I've been through the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York, but the Catskill Mountains uh, seem very interesting to me. So that might be my next stop. I don't know that I'm going to do a lot of stopping through Pennsylvania or, or Maryland. Um, if something comes up of interest, then I will. But I think that is where I'm headed. And as always, thank you for escaping normal life with me.